Thank you very much. And it's nice to be here. Nice to be here. It's nice to be any place. <laughs> and thank you for that standing ovation. But it made me nervous. As a rule, an entertainer gets a standing ovation at the end of the show. You were afraid I wouldn't be around that long, huh? Later, you'll see more of my stage show. Right now, for all of you who wondered what my life off stage is like, what I do and who I do it with, I'm going to take you through a typical day of mine with nothing censored, nothing left out. Hey, that's exciting. I may have to watch this myself. This is my house in Beverly Hills, the same house Gracie and I moved into 55 years ago. Here I am in my backyard taking my daily walk. Every morning, rain or shine, I walk 10 times around the pool. But if it rains, I let Gene Kelly do the walking. But I don't let him sing. Around my house, I do the singing. I used to walk around the pool 20 times, but a few years ago, I cut it down to 10. It was either that or get a smaller pool. Everybody agrees that walking is great for you. But in Beverly Hills, nobody walks. If they have to go three blocks, they drive. Some people have two, three, or even four cars. I got one neighbor who has a little car that he drives to his big car. Some people find walking boring. They should try golf. It's a great game and you do a lot of walking, but not at my club. The caddies do the walking. The members all ride in carts. The caddies look great and the members look like they need makeup. Nice yard, isn't it? These red bricks are all brand new. The old bricks fell apart. How do you like that? I'm 93 and the bricks fell apart. You want to see me walk fast? Speed up the camera. Well, here I am having breakfast. Yeah. I'm not a big eater. I have a very small breakfast and a very small lunch. I have one big meal a day, my dinner. Yeah. For breakfast, I'm having four prunes, a little milk, and two cups of coffee. I like prunes. I like anything that has more wrinkles than I have. I'm nuts about raisins. <laughs> For lunch, I have a cup of soup and a half a toasted bagel. Bagels are good because they have a hole in the middle. You can eat and look through the hole and see what you're eating. I think most people eat too much. If everybody in this country lost 10 pounds, everybody would be 10 pounds lighter. Why did I say that? That's not funny. I'll never say it again. The reason I'm a small eater goes back to my early days in Bordeaux. I couldn't afford a good meal. My idea of a good meal was French fried potatoes and ketchup. To this day, my stomach thinks I'm not doing well. I haven't had a steak in 30 years, steak. You cut it and you chew it and you chew it and you chew it and you cut it and you cut it. If I'm gonna work that out, I wanna get paid for eating. Personally, I don't even like red meat. I like red buttons. I like red skeleton. I like red fox, but I don't like red meat. I like Steve Allen, but he doesn't fit here. <laughs> More coffee, Mr. Burns? Please. This is Daniel. Nobody pours coffee like Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel, show him. Daniel and Arlette have been with me for years and years and years. You really came in here to get into the picture, huh? That's right. Well, we, we better get Arlette in the two. Arlette! I don't get her in, she'll, she'll get mad. If she gets mad, she'll save me prunes without wrinkles. Arlette, there she is, yeah. You two wave to the camera. I'll tell him what a nice man I am. He's a nice man. Arlette. He's a nice man. Remind me to give you a raise. <laughs> Daniel, go get the rest of the family. Okay. Want to take this with you? That's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll let, I'll let's a great cook. 
What am I having for dinner tonight? Nothing. You're going out. Oh, yeah, I'm going out. Well, what do I usually have for dinner? Well, a bowl of soup, a mixed green salad, broiled fish, two vegetables, a slice of bread, and cookies. Cookies. I love cookies. They're nice and crisp. They make a noise in your mouth. Sounds like applause. So I do an encore. Have another cookie. Sometimes I'm such a big hit, I have seven or eight cookies. That's not true. I lie a lot. You see, when I lie, I tell you it's a lie. That's why it's not a lie, which is also not true. Oh, here's the rest of the family. There they are. Lady and Pauline. I'll take Pauline. That's it. Thank you, Daniel. There you are. Now wave to the camera. No, not you, I'll let I'm talking to the kiddies. There they are. Here. I'll let you take Pauline. You four go upstairs and sing harmony. <laughs> and uh, I'll go upstairs and show you my daily exercises. Welcome to my bedroom. This is where I do my exercises. Every morning when I wake up, my exercises are the first thing I do. All right, so it's the second thing I do. Then I have breakfast. Then I walk around the pool, and then I'm off to my office where I work from 10 to noon. That's my morning routine. <laughs> Let me tell you about these exercises. When I was 70 years old, I went to a doctor. He examined me and he says, George, you got a bad back. And the older you get, the worse it's gonna get. It's a great doctor. Every year it gets worse. But I do these exercises every morning. It takes me a half hour and it's boring. But I'm not rich enough to have somebody else do it for me. I never miss doing my exercises. That's the important thing. No matter how late I'm up the night before, I still do my exercises. It works for me, and it'll work for you, too. But check with your doctor. I don't want to be sued. If anything goes wrong, sue your doctor. This is what I do. I start out on the bed like this. Ten times on each side, I touch the floor. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Now, this is a neck exercise. First, you stretch five, five on each side. One, one, two, two, three. Now, you roll your head around ten times on each side. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Reverse it. One, two, three, nine, ten. That takes out the wrinkles. I got a very sexy neck. This is a breathing exercise. I inhale, it goes down into my stomach, and then I exhale. I lie on the bed to do this. This way, with my feet on the floor, and I go one, two, three, nine, ten. I do this 50 times. <coughs> it's good for my neck. <laughs> anyway, when I sit up, I do it 20 times. One, two, three, four, 20 times. I made this exercise up. I make up a lot of exercises. I'm a country singer that makes up exercises. Now I touch the floor 10 times. <sighs> one, two, three. Four, five. You notice I bend my knees. I'm at the age now where everything bends a little. Six. Then one, one, two, two. Anyway, I do that ten times. Then I do one, one, two, two, three, three. Then I do one, two, three, four. This is good for your arms. One, two, three, four, five. I do that ten times. It's also not for your cuticles. I've got a good neck and very exciting cuticles. Then what do I do after that? Oh yeah, then I do the same thing back here. One, two, three, four, ten times. Then I put my arms over my head and I stretch twenty times. One, two, three, four, 20 times, and then I sit on the bed again and do that same breathing exercise 50 times lying down, then I sit up and do it 20 times. Then I get on the floor and do the hard stuff. That's three, four. I do that 10 times, but you gotta make sure that you touch your chin. Don't bring it into your mouth. You might bite yourself. You better use some ketchup. Okay, I do that 10 times. Then I put my hands down and bring both knees up there, like that. One, five times. Two, three, four. That's five. Then I do the same monotonous breathing thing again for 20 times. Then I sit up, like this, see? 
Now I do the hard stuff. Now I do sit-ups. Without my feet being under anything. <sighs> One. Pretty good, huh? Two. How about that? I'm 93. Three. <laughs> I feel like 95. Four. I do this ten times. Then after I do this ten times, then I sit up and I do this. One, two, three, four. I do twenty of these. Twenty, 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 twenty. Then I lie down again and do that same breathing exercise. My elbows are on the floor and I ride bicycle. One, two, three, four. Then after doing it ten times, I do this five times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. Anyway, I do it five times. And I put my feet down. And then I do the same thing again. I breathe again. Don't forget, I made this up. After doing this 20 times, now I do this. One. Two. Three. Do this ten times, and the tenth time I do this. Now I ride bicycle again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I do this five times, and then the breathing exercises again. Twenty times. Then I sit up, and somebody helps me on the bed. That's not true. I help myself. Well, this is the end of my exercises. Are you tired? I'm not. I'm going to start all over again. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. You recognize me, huh? Of course. Have a nice day, Mr. Newman. Pretty funny, that kid. <laughs> This is the lot where I filmed all our Burns and Allen shows and the other shows I put together, like Mr. Red, The Talking Horse, The Bob Cummings Show, Wendy and Me with Connie Stevens, The People's Choice with Jackie Cooper, Mona McCluskey with Juliet Browse. How did I do all that? With a lot of help, that's how. Hi, George. Emma, S-A-double-M-S. -S. Emma Sams, right? Right. What are you doing? Oh, right now I'm trying to get out of the car. <laughs> I made it, I made it. <laughs> no, I mean, what are you doing here? You're shooting another movie. My office is here. I've been here for years. Oh, well, it seems to agree with you. You look great. Because I got on makeup. Oh. <laughs> I'm wearing Dolores Del Rio lips. <laughs> what are you doing here? Doing Dynasty. I've got a big love scene coming up this afternoon. Why don't you come over to my office? We'll rise up together. George. And send over John Collins. Pretty girl. Wish I was a little older. Hi, George. It's me, Yakov Smirnov. Oh, sure. How are you, kid? I'm wonderful. You can congratulate me. Congratulations. I didn't tell you what for yet. I'm getting married. That's it? Can I say it now? No. Congratulations. Did you pick a date for your wedding? Wow, you can bring a date to your own wedding? What a country! <laughs> well, lots of luck, kid. Well, thank you, George. I just want to tell you something. When I came to this country, I saw you perform on TV, and I said to myself, now this guy is going to make it. Thanks, and you're going to make it, too. You remind me of me when I was young. But then again, the pyramids remind me of me when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> Now you made it up right on the spot. That's great. What a talent. I knew you were going to make it. Bye-bye, George. One of my great jokes. Yakov Smirnov. What a name. I don't know whether to say it or to drink it. You say it, you have to take a chaser. Goodbye, Eddie. And say hello to the lady in your life. And give my love to your wife, too. That's not too funny, but it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't get funny until about 1.45. By 3 o'clock, I'm a riot. Goodbye. You want to sign the weekly checks, George? No, but I will. <laughs> this is my secretary, Jack Langdon. He's been with me for 28 years. If he works out, I think I'll keep him. Your doctor called. Which one? 
Dr. Sugarman said it's been a while and he wants to know when he can come to see you. How does Dr. Sugarman feel? He feels fine. Then I don't have to see him. <laughs> sure. That fellow sitting there is my writer, Hal Goldman. We work two hours every day. Hal has forgotten more about comedy than most writers know. And if this kid forgets much more, I'll have to get another writer. This sounds pretty good so far. Are we getting too long? No, it holds up. But I still think that first joke was better the way I had it. Heather, who needs all that talk? Let's get to the laughs. It seems so abrupt now. My way builds it. But my way is funnier. And to me, my way is funnier. Jack, did you give Hal a check yet? Not yet. You're right, George. Your way is funny. I thought so. I don't want to interrupt genius at work. But George, you're renewed at Caesar's Palace. You'll play Vegas, Tahoe, and Atlantic City. It's all settled? Signed and sealed. Leave it to your manager. Who's that? Me. Oh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I told Army Archer he could interview you for his column in Variety. He'll be here at 11.30. 11.30? I don't get funny until 1.45. <laughs> George, you keep so busy. Television, commercials, books, movies. And Irving Pine tells me you've renewed with Caesars. Don't you ever feel that at 93 you're pushing it a little? Let me tell you something, Army. There isn't a thing I can't do now that I couldn't do when I was 18. I was pathetic when I was 18. I wasn't so hot when I was 25 either. I saved everything for now. I hate to brag, but I'm very good at now. <laughs> so you don't feel that you're uh, slowing up? Yeah, oh, who are you kidding? When you get older, you slow up. I've noticed a few signs, for instance. My cuticles aren't what they used to be. When I blow smoke rings, I notice that they're smaller and not as round as they used to be. And when I drink a martini instead of two olives, I'm down to one. And your sex life? Down to one olive. <laughs> you know there's a saying that your legs are the first to go. Forget it. That's not true. Never was. How old are you, Army? I thought I was asking the questions. Okay, okay. But age is a state of mind, an attitude. I see people, the minute they get to be 60, they start practicing to be old. They start taking little steps. They drop food on themselves. They take little naps when you're talking to them. By the time they get to be 70, they've made it. They're now a hit. They're now old. <laughs> Not me. When I was 60, I won a Charleston contest. <laughs> Who came in second, Lionel Barrymore? You ask the questions, I'll do the funny stuff. <laughs> right. So, George, I take it, you have no plans to retire. I'm waiting for vaudeville to come back so I can start all over again, retirement. It's not so great about sitting around and doing nothing with all that time on your hands. It's nice to be my age and get out of bed and have something to do that day. All right, George. One last question, on the level. How long do you plan to stay in showbiz? Forever, I mean. I can't afford to die, I'd lose a fortune. Can I quote you on that? Is it funny? No. Then say Milton Berle said it. <laughs> <laughs> At 12 noon, I'm back in my car headed for something that I always look forward to. Lunch and a couple of hours of bridge at my club. I think everyone should have a hobby. This is mine. I try to play bridge every afternoon from 1 to 3. It's the only thing I know that takes my mind off show business. Bridge requires complete concentration. I forget everything else. Sometimes I concentrate so hard I forget I'm playing bridge. Of course, some days it's more stimulating than others. It depends on who you're playing with. So far, it looks like if I'm going to be stimulated, I better get myself a double martini. I pass. Buttons. It's your bed. Please, I'm counting. Got a lot of points here. Hey, you got a good hand, huh? Good hand? Moses. Oh, no. Who said, when the Red Sea parted, what the hell is that? I was just going in for a dip. Never had a hand like, like this. this. What? Lot, who said when his wife was turned into a pillar of salt, salt I got, popcorn I need. Never, Never had a hand like this. Look, Red, you're playing bridge, you're not playing Las Vegas. Come on, bid. Two hearts. Pass.
Barry, I'm 93. I'd, I'd like to live long enough to finish this game. But could we review the bidding, please? Review the bidding. I passed. Two hearts. Passed, and you said nothing. And I also said Moses when the we words... Heard it. Oh, we heard it. We heard it. Oh, you heard that? We heard it. There's no sense looking up there for help. I'm playing bridge down here. Four hearts. I pass. Six hearts. Seven clubs. Seven hearts. I double. I redouble. I got news for you, Red. Sad news. It's a mixed deal. I got 14 cards. <laughs> oh, George, come on. You knew you had 14 cards. Why did you make us go through all of this? Because you're playing bridge with a mean old man. <laughs> the meanest. The meanest. Hey, hi, fellas. Hi, uh, Murray. Hi, Murray. Murray. Hi, Amsterdam. You don't know him. Sure. Hello, nice Norm. to see you. How are you? Good. Hey, listen, I don't want to interrupt your game, but I got to tell you, the craziest thing just happened to me. Ask me what happened. What happened? Funny you should ask. Okay. You know, my car's in the shop, so I took a cab over here. We're driving along down Sunset Boulevard. Guy goes right through a red light. I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, hey, you just went through a red light. He said, don't tell me how to drive. My brother showed me how. Come to another street, another red light. Psst, goes right through that. I said, you just went through another red light. He said, don't tell me how to drive. My brother showed me how. Now we come to a green light and he stops dead. I said, what's the matter with you? I said, you went through two red lights. Now you're stopping with a green light. Why? He said, my brother might be coming the other way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> What's the matter, Red? Is he not laughing? That's funny. Fourteen cards. I'm not in the mood to laugh. Oh, well, you let me know when you're in the mood. I'll come back and tell you the same joke over again. What's he so happy about? He just made a seven hot bit. <laughs> as soon as the game is over, I'm going home to take a nap. I sleep from 3.30 to 5.30 every day. And what happens if you miss it? I don't miss it. I do the same thing every day. I keep the same hours, eat the same food, smoke the same cigars, and drink the same martinis. And tell the same jokes. And tell the same jokes. Fourteen, Fourteen cards. I thought so. Fourteen cards. Dear. I had a nap, and I'm now making myself a couple of martinis. They're not both for me. One is for my piano player, Marty Jacobs. He drops in now and then and we sing a couple of songs. If I like him, I sing him on the stage. If I don't like him, I sing him around the house and drive the hell crazy. When I get through with Morty, I'm going out to dinner tonight with Carol Channing and Charlie Lowe. They're nice people. He always picks up the check. I know. You're wondering if I really go out with young girls as much as I say. Well, not quite. But look, I went out with young girls when I was 18. Why shouldn't I go out with them now? I enjoy their company and they get to enjoy a good meal. I don't think it's good when older people just hang around each other comparing gravy stains, unless it's expensive gravy. And I'm not interested in what happened yesterday. I'm only interested in what I'm doing right now. Okay, so I'm 93. I love my age. When I was 18, I was old. I couldn't get a job. Hi. Morty, there's a, mart there's a martini for you. George, I don't drink anymore. How old are you? I'm 69. Well, when I'm 69, I'll stop drinking, too. Oh, that's funny. God. Funny, huh? <laughs> think, I, think I ought to go into show business? Yeah, I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, I woke up in the dawn. Oh, in my key, huh? What an ear. What an ear. Oh, I, oh, I woke up in the dawn. My love was gone. <clears throat> And there was I beneath the skies of gray. So my hat I gave a tilt, my cane I gave a twirl. I went merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. Oh, I didn't have a cent, my rent I spent. I knew I'd have to leave the key a pay. So my hat I gave a tilt, my cane I gave a twirl. Went merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. But in the lining of my pocket, I happened to find a lonesome little dime. 
I'll just have to toss it up, says I. Heads for coffee, tails for shine, but it fell upon the ground, and there it found an open manhole where it went astray. <clears throat> so my hat I gave a tilt, my cane I gave a twirl, went merrily, merrily, merrily. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Why are you singing? You're not supposed to sing. You're supposed to play. Wait, 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 give me one second. No, no. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Sweetheart's number one. Sweet, okay. Sweetheart number one is nearly 50. <coughs> While number two is 22 today. Number three came like a springtime flower. And she'll be three months old the first of May. My heart and its triangular devotion beats for the ones in life so dear to me. A mother, a wife, and a baby to share my life. That sweetheart, number one, two, hold it. Marty, I'm gonna show you what a nice man I am. I'm gonna let you finish the song. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. We're not doing it right. Okay, I'll drink your martini too. I'll stop when I'm 98. There's going to be a festival this evening. A gathering of happy people there. They'll be noted individuals, the prominent distinctiveness to permeate the social atmosphere. Everyone who's anyone will be there to honor my lovely fiance. There'll be a grand ovation, special ostentation when the preacher gives the lovely bride away. My girl is a high tone lady. Won't say yes, might say maybe. Struts like a peacock night and day. Beautiful and she was born that way. No guy can separate us. She thinks that I'm the greatest along the line. They cannot shine with that high tone gal of mine. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Right. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. Done. Soon as I get through singing merrily, 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 pick it up. Don't wait for my way. Don't you don't know that's coming. Okay. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. Merrily, merrily, merrily on my way. The hell with it. Anyway, Walter Matt, that was a very funny fellow. I love his wife, Carol. I love you too, Carol. You're my two favorite Carols. Oh, that's a nice compliment, George. Anyway, Walter and I are doing the Sunshine Boys. And this, we were doing a little publicity. There were seven or eight newspaper men. And Walter turned to me and says, George, when did sex stop for you? I said, at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> Wait a minute, George, you said the funny line. How does that make Walter Matthau funny? Well, he asked the question. Well, he asked the question? Yeah. Oh, now I get it. Charlie, you know her longer than I do. What did you just get? Oh, please, George, I'm not in show business. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you Walter Matthau's favorite joke. I don't tell jokes, but this is funny. Teacher says to a kid in school, what does your father do? He says, my father's a doctor. Said the other kid, what does your father do? He says, my father's a lawyer. Said the third kid, what does your father do? He says, my father is dead. He said, what did he do before he died? The kid says, he went, ooh. <laughs> and how's everything here? Oh, great, great. Best dinner I've had in years. Thank you. Don't forget to give the chef a raise. <laughs> I know nothing about food. If I get bad food or I don't like it, I send for ketchup. If I go with a girl, if I don't like her, I send for ketchup. I like ketchup. <laughs> uh, Charlie, where's, uh, where's Carol going next? Let's see, uh, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and... Uh, well, George, I wouldn't want to be around either you or Carol if you weren't booked. Is that supposed to be a joke? <laughs> no. no, good, then you told it well. <laughs> and, George, I've added a brand new routine. Good, when are you going to come over and show it to me? Well, now, how did you know? How did I know? It took a wild guess. You come over and show me all your routines. And you know what? I want to show you all the costumes. I've got five new changes. Only five? Well, you've seen the other nine. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, Carol, I never met anybody like you. You're always on stage. Am I really? Is it true that a robber came into your house one night while you were asleep and shined a flashlight into your face and you, you sat up and you sang two choruses of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend? George, that's not true at all. Oh, I thought so. 
I sat up and sang four choruses of Hello, Dolly. Oh. <laughs> but, George, I can't wait to get your opinion of my new routine. You've always been such a help to me. Good. You know that monologue that you gave me? Um, I explained that I wear, that I do wear eyeshadow and then liner and then four pair of eyelashes uppers and three pair of lowers then i put mascara on both of those and that way i get that natural look do you know i used to say that way i get that natural look and you told me to say that natural look and you just wouldn't believe the difference it made i'm glad it worked and the biggest laugh in my act was the line you gave me when I say, I love working with George Burns. I used to like to run my hands through his hair, and one day he came in his dressing room and caught me doing it. Did I give that to her? I did. Well, true. That's a good joke. I might take it back. <laughs> oh, George, I almost forgot. Betty White told me to be sure to say hello to you. You know, you're her favorite golden boy. I love Betty White. Yeah. I love to dance with her. And I dance very close. At my age, I gotta dance close. I gotta hold on to something. Not I'll fall down. <laughs> did I ever tell you my Betty White story? You probably did, but tell it again. You don't mind? No, I'd love to hear it. Well, I was doing Circus of the Stars, and they put me with Max the baboon. You know, a baboon is the fiercest animal in the jungle. So I went into the cage, and I dashed after it was all over. I went to the telephone to call your and my friend Betty White, who's very big in animals. So I said, Betty, when I went into the cage, Max the baboon swung at me, he hung upside down, he lunged at me with his fangs, he screeched and he yelled and everybody came running. I said, Betty, I don't want to do this, what should I do? And Betty said, oh, Carol, we all had to get used to you at first. <laughs> Wouldn't you know Betty would side with the animal? <laughs> she said, she was funny. Oh, that is funny. But I saw you in this Channing sitting here, Mr. Burns, and I just had to let you know how much I enjoyed your Gracie book. I love, I love writing it. Do you mind if I have your autograph? Sure. Carol? I'm first? You're first. Because I'm the girl. That's right. Yes. Anne. Anne. A-N-N-E. Sure. To Anne. Yeah. I'm in that book. I'm so proud. It's a wonderful book. Isn't it a great book? It's wonderful. It's a work of art. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Burns, <laughs> do you mind if I give you a little kiss? Go right there, kid. Thank you. Are you pretty girl? A little too old for me. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, George, you and Carol are, are really very considerate. I, I know a lot of performers that resent being bothered while they're uh, dining out. Well, let them dine in. Time to worry is when you're in a restaurant and, and nobody bothers you. <laughs> George, I've never understood why some performers resent their fans. What do they want, people who can't stand them? I've had both, and I'll take the fans any time. If a little boy comes over to me for an autograph, what am I supposed to say? Get lost? Sign the autograph, give him a cigar, make his father pay for it, and the three of us are happy. Uh -huh. Oh, George, it's always such fun to be out with you. Well, good company, good service, good food. When are we going to do it again? Whenever you can afford it, Charlie. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's my pleasure. No, 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 you're always picking up the check. Now it's Carol's turn. No, no, no. <laughs> Captain, the check, please. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I enjoy evenings like this. I enjoy my days, my bridge game, my work, my books, the movies I do. But what I love best is when I walk out on the stage in front of a live audience. This was at the El Camino College. How about that reception? Every time I walk out on the stage, it happens. They're surprised I can still walk. Did I tell you something? So am I. And now at 92, they're talking about doing the story of my life. Making it into a movie. I hope they do it fast so I can see it. There's only one thing holding it up. They're waiting for some actor to get old enough to play me. I do a lot of jokes about my age. They never miss. I find with age jokes, the older I get, 
the bigger the laughs. When I'm a hundred, I'll be getting screams. I can hardly wait. I can't understand comedians walking out on the stage and doing stuff that doesn't fit their age. Sure, I talk about my sex life. At my age, at least let me talk about it. Morty, will you help me with the stool? Okay, kid. There you are. Just let me help you back to the piano. There you are. See, I'm a nice man. I helped him back to the piano. Okay, so part of the time I'm sitting down. Why not? If they can sit, I can sit. Look, I'm on the stage for an hour and I have lots to talk about. Right now, I'm telling him about an old vaudeville act I did with a dancing partner who was very bow-legged. Every time she sat down, she looked like somebody stole a cello. In between the talk, I sing a lot of old songs that I made famous that nobody remembers. Beautiful ladies. <laughs> if they don't stop making them so beautiful, it's all off with me. I'm just a human being. My eyes were made for seeing. My left eye is a good little eye, but my right eye likes to roam. If they don't stop making them so beautiful, I'll have to leave my right eye home. <laughs> I want you to meet my piano player, Morty Jacobs. Morty, a little bow. Morty now, Morty's going to do a piano solo, a little composition he wrote himself. About a piano player that's got a very good left hand. Okay, kid, do it. in front of a live audience. And without all that warmth and affection coming from the audience, I couldn't do it. And before you know it, the hour is over, and it's time for my closing number. This is a song written by Leslie Brickus and Anthony Dooley, and it tells you just the way I feel. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Don't you realize we're living today? I'm happy to say, in the good old bad old days, taking the breaks, making mistakes in the good old bad old ways. Some people say they long for the old days to take them way back when, but I'd rather stay right here with the gold days than go through that again. Seems to me you're either out or you're in, you lose or win in these sad old glad old days. You're poor or you're rich, who knows which is which anyways. We're living on time, we're having to borrow. No one knows if we will live to see tomorrow. Nevertheless, I guess we gotta confess, these are the good old, bad old days. Day by day you're either up or you're down, king or clown. Good old, bad old days. It's heaven or hell, hail or farewell, the good old battle day. I don't want to hurt my 
shovel. Don't you realize we're living today? I'm happy to say, in the good old, bad old days. And if they play in my key, I'll wait for the curtain to raise. I'll sing all my songs, put on my makeup, right until the day that I forget to wake up. I'm happy to say, I'm living today in these good old, these bad old, in these good old, bad old days. Thank you very much. You know, when I first came out on the stage, I told you, all you need is a great opening and a great closing. Well, you just heard my great opening, and now you're going to hear my great closing. You've been a charming audience. I had a wonderful time, and thank you very, very much. Like I always say, you can't help getting older, but you don't have to get older.